Hello. 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 Today, helping people. We look at how to deal with people. And how to solve their problems. And we meet this woman, Tina Saunier, who works at Universal Studios in Florida. I had a problem this morning. That's right. You were late for work. I know. My grandmother telephoned me. She wasn't feeling very well. I'm sorry to hear that. And she needed my help. She wanted me to go shopping with her. So what did you do? I took her shopping in my car. The trouble is, I nearly had a crash. And what if you had had a crash? What do you mean? What would we have done here if you'd had an accident? Look, I had to help my grandmother. If I hadn't taken her shopping, she wouldn't have had any food. Well, Natalie went to help her grandmother, and she was late for work. What would you have done in her position? I would have done exactly the same. I would have phoned the school to tell them I was going to be late. I would certainly have taken my grandmother to the shops. I think people do have obligation to their relatives, and particularly elderly relatives. I would have explained to my grandmother that I had to be on time. I would have rung the office, uh, made some excuse, and taken my grandmother to the shops. I'd have taken my grandmother to the shops. This is a job for Mighty Man. What's the matter? My washing machine has gone wrong. Oh, dear. I'm sorry to hear that. But don't worry. I'll soon mend it. But... but... It's all right. No job is too hard for me. Do you know something? What? If I'd known you had a problem, I would have brought my tools. Oh. There you are. Now, what would you have done if I hadn't arrived? I would have asked her to mend it. Oh, dear. The man didn't know there was a problem, so he didn't bring any tools with him. If I'd known. If I had known. If I'd known, I would have brought my tools. If I'd known... I would have brought my tools. The man thought he'd done a very good job. What would you have done if I hadn't arrived? What would you have done if I hadn't arrived? And the woman replied, I would have asked her to mend it. I would have asked her to mend it. Universal Studios in Florida has thousands of visitors every day. Tina Saunier works in Guest Relations, a department which is there to help visitors. Let's find out what happens at Universal Studios and what they do in Guest Relations. Universal Studios Florida is a theme park and it's also the largest working motion picture studio outside of California. Here we have many uh, rides and shows based on different movies or television series that may now be in progress. And we also do a number of productions such as commercials and movies right here on our back lot. You're going to have a lot of fun today, so let's say smile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> our guest relations department is set up to assist our guests with whatever needs they may have throughout their day here at Universal. Uh, we do everything from warming baby bottles to assisting guests that may get sick throughout the day, giving out information, whether it be foreign language information or just assisting people with planning their day throughout the park. To go to E.T., right now we are right here. All you do is walk up Hollywood Boulevard, sir. Just make a right at the stop sign and continue walking past Mel's Diner to our World Expo area. Okay. And E.T. is a very good place to start. Okay, thank you very much. I also try to find out from our guests where they're from, if this is their first trip or their second trip, 
usually if it's their first trip, then they need to get familiarized with our studio, and so I suggest ways that they can familiarize themselves by either taking our production tram tour or by walking a certain path that will give them a, a bird's eye view of everything that they need to do or may want to see. Down there, our production tour is a 15 minute informational tour. And so what it will basically do is it will take you around the studio and just show you where everything is. It's a good way to start your day too. I think we'll start there. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good time. We have guests here who lose a, a variety of things. The most common objects that they lose are sunglasses and cameras. All of those? No, I've done three. We've only got three left. Okay. That's right. During the summer, a lot of people lose their hats also. And of course, they lose their children, which is a big thing. License. No money. No money? Okay. I've got a credit card and it's got a driver's license. Okay. I'll take that in. Also, a lot of people, especially men, lose their wallets. A lot of our rides are very turbulent and they'll go on the right and they won't notice it until they get to the cafeteria or a restaurant that they want to go to lunch at and say, oh my goodness, my wallet's gone. Um, we do everything, anything we can do to assist our guests, we do that so that they can have a great time here. People seem to lose a lot of things when they visit Universal Studios. Sunglasses. Cameras. Hats. Wallets. And children. At guest relations, Tina and her colleagues often have to deal with people who don't speak English. There are also many visitors who are deaf. What do they do when there are communication problems like that? We get a great many people here from foreign countries who do not speak English. And um, it's very hard sometimes to, to communicate with these people, but oftentimes, um, people can speak just very few words of English, or we can speak, not just myself, but other uh, people that work in the guest relations department here can speak a few words. So there, there seems to be always someone available to speak, whether it's a few words of French or Spanish or Portuguese or whatever it may be, to, to be able to assist that guest. I'm looking for this one in Spanish. Spanish? Yes. I can get that for you. Let's stay right down. All right. Do you need just one? Uh, it's possible well, to... Dos? Yes. <laughs> there you are. Right, thank you very You're much. welcome. Have a good day. But also, very often it's, it's, it's gestures. It's, well, um, you know, how can I help you? I don't know. Um, maybe, I, you know, come with me. Is this what you want? Pointing. No Chinese. No Chinese. Yeah. No Chinese. No Chinese. No Sorry. We also have a great number of people here that are deaf and we all don't know sign language and so sometimes it comes down to them writing down what they need and and we you know write back to them. Tina mentioned two methods that people can use to deal with communication problems. Gestures and sign language. Two ways of communicating without speaking. Tina often has to deal with visitors who have special disabilities. In the next part of the interview, she talks about a visitor who suffered from MS, multiple sclerosis, and we hear about the special arrangements that were made. Often we have guests who know that they are coming on vacation and they'll either write us or they'll call us and they'll, they'll tell us their special circumstances and ask if there's anything unique that we can do for them such as one time we had a mother, um, a lady, she was very young, very attractive lady, about 33, and she had two small children. Her husband uh, called me in advance and said, look, you know, my wife has been diagnosed with, diagnosed with MS, and um, we don't want our children to know they're eight and nine years old, and we don't, I don't want my wife to sit in a wheelchair because I don't want my kids to realize that there's something wrong here. And so what we did is we simply told them to come to Guest Relations and that we would assist them by giving them a back door card where she would not have to uh, sit in a wheelchair. Also what we did for that family was in this case because she couldn't wait in lines and heat exhaustion was um, a big problem for them. We suggested that they split their day so that if she needed to go back to the hotel she could and come back that night. They came at a time of year where they, they could do that because we had very extended hours at that time. So, 
The woman was able to rest and come back to Universal Studios later in the evening. But what would have happened if she hadn't come at that time of year? We would have done the same thing as far as the VIP pass. However, she wouldn't have gotten, she wouldn't have been able to fully enjoy her day here, go back to the hotel and then come back that night because there would have been no night events to come back to. Tina Saunier meets all kinds of people with all kinds of problems. Let's finish with Tina telling us what is the hardest, or as she says, the toughest thing about her job. The toughest part about working in guest relations is being yelled at <laughs> relentlessly. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, people sometimes, um, I have not always been in guest relations and um, it's very hard to sometimes listen to some of the things that people have to say to you because they are just so frustrated and they are so mad and they're going to get it out of their system and they don't care what they're calling you or what they're saying. This is how they feel. And you have to stand there and listen. And um, it used to be very, very hard, but I think because I'm becoming more accustomed to it, it's okay now. I understand that they're just venting and I know not to take it personally. Um, but it's hard. It's very hard. Poor Tina. People shouting and getting angry at her all day long. Yes, and they're supposed to be on holiday. Imagine what they must be like when they're not having a good time. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.